Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to punch, chop, and kick your way through the greatest era of action movies. Now listen, this movie made it into our choice for the season. All of us had extremely low expectations as far as the quality of movie that it would be. But knowing it would be a lot of fun. That's how it made it into this season. And I mean, who could resist Rowdy Roddy Piper? That's exactly the point. That's exactly the point. Who can resist a movie with Roddy Piper? I'm actually surprised that we didn't see him more as a leading man. It's almost as if he just chose very poor movies to be in. (laughs) (laughs) You take that back about Welcome to Frogtown. (laughs) Frogtown is a gym. I would have given you They Live, but come on, Frogtown. Yeah, They Live is actually okay. <laughs> you know, it's all right. <laughs> they Live is his lane. He should have stayed in his lane. <laughs> we are talking about the not They Live for no, Roddy Piper. No, no, no. Not <laughs> Welcome to Frogtown. We are talking about the movie, the great action movie, Tough and Deadly, which originally premiered on February 14th, 1995. Just Barely squeak it in there for our date range that we have for the best movies of Punch, Chop, and Kick, 75 to 95. We just barely make it in there. Best movies? <laughs> best movies to Most Punch, Chop, and Kick. fun movies. Okay, I was going to say, like, this, this, this don't, fa- that's not going to fit in this category, okay? We were stretching the category, apparently, too. Best. <laughs> it is directed by Steve Cohen. You, now, listen, Steve is a quality second unit or like what's also called the assistant director the assistant director on a ton of movies the goonies invasion usa back to school and even the miami vice episode better living through chemistry he was the second unit director on that episode too a miami vice connection good experience it is written by steve cohen and his name his name is great otto c Pazzo. Otto Pazzo. It's got to be a pseudonym, right? I, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> well, I, I think once we get the music, we might find out a little bit more about this uh, movie's financier. <laughs> Otto Pazzo only has two writing credits. He wrote this movie, and he wrote a movie called Balance of Power, starring guess who? Billy Blanks. Oh, surprise! <laughs> <laughs> so he was just trying to make it work with Billy. Like, this is going to work. We're going to get you. We're going to make you a star, Billy. No, no, no. Please don't talk. (laughs) I didn't actually write you any lines. (laughs) (laughs) We, of course, chose this movie knowing absolutely nothing about it, except for it has an unbelievably bad cover. Of course, that's the that is like the hallmark for every action movie that you like from the 80s and 90s. It has a terrible cover. (laughs) (laughs) And it had... Roddy Piper and Billy Blanks. Now listen, there is absolutely zero surprise that the Go With The Heat podcast chose a movie that has Billy Blanks. In fact, every criteria for a movie, the first question is, is is Billy Blanks in this movie somehow? (laughs) Can we make him in it? (laughs) Can we pretend he's in it? (laughs) But there is no way that we can pass on a movie that's got Billy Blanks and Roddy Piper, because if you are anyone worth anything that grew up in the 80s, WWF, was life and doing guest stars and finding out that he is a scottish canadian kind of ruined the image a little bit for me i'm gonna be honest (laughs) did you not know that he was scottish canadian i knew the scottish from the rowdy rowdy piper did not realize the canadian because you know in the wwf he was from glasgow i feel he's less threatening now (laughs) so clearly as time went on the wwe now has the gone off of the he's from glasgow because he has a whole family of people that wrestle and they're all from canada Uh, so it's like it's well known like he has he has family that continued the legacy of wrestling and like nephews or something not his kids no his daughter teal piper oh okay um, she made her acw premiere and then after that joined wow it's women of wrestling that's what that is the only person who ever took on his persona was Ronda Rousey. When she mm. came to the WWE, she would come out to his theme music and she would wear the kilt and like, cause she was a really big, supposedly she was a very big uh, Roddy Piper fan when she was a kid. So the most important reason why we chose this movie mm. is because it looks really bad and it's got two people <laughs> that we love. <laughs> so we couldn't say no, because you know, you know, if you listen to this podcast, just as much as we love 
great action movies. We love horribly bad action movies. <laughs> and this one delivered on all the things we love. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did not disappoint on any of those points. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John. So because we chose this movie almost exclusively on the people who star in it, we got to go to the guest stars right from the very, very beginning before we get anywhere near this movie. Yeah, I mean... All the guest stars in this movie, there's so many of them. Um, obviously, <laughs> Billy Blanks is in it. We've talked about him. If you don't know who Billy Blanks is at this point listening to our podcast, go back and listen to any number of our episodes, and I'm sure I will tell you who he is. <laughs> Blood Fit. So, go back and listen to Blood Fit. We talk about it yes. in detail on that one. <laughs> I think the, the last important thing show. is... <laughs> yes. Four yeah. shots from I, the hip. Running down field doesn't miss a single one. My hero. <laughs> so I think the, the most important thing is that he actually has a speaking role in this movie. <laughs> so he plays John Portland. And this is not the first Billy Blanks, Roddy, Rowdy, uh, Rowdy, Roddy Piper. That is going to get me all podcast. <laughs> this is not the first Rowdy, Roddy Piper, Billy Blanks movie. They also starred together in Back in Action, we think. Because we can't actually find a copy of it. <laughs> so, if you have a copy of Back in Action that came out in 94, which is not a sequel to this movie, please send it our way. So it's a pre yes. maybe it's a prequel. It's yeah. a probably that it could be. <laughs> maybe that's how we'll find out who exactly John Portland is because I don't even know if they said his name in the movie. No, that's yeah, they did say his name <laughs> at the very end, which is funny why they credit him as John Portland, but his but his name's actually Jake. <laughs> yes, yeah. That's I was like, like did they just call him Jake? Like I've been going, wait, watching the whole movie, like they haven't said his name once. <laughs> So if that's not bad enough, Rowdy Roddy Piper plays Elmo French. Although I swear to God, when he said it, it was like French. <laughs> I don't know. He So I already gave away a little bit. He's the Scottish Canadian pro wrestler. Apparently, according to his wiki, com comedian. I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. How is he? Yeah. How is he and coach a comedian? I don't I don't understand this. <laughs> And an actor. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2015. But, I mean, he wrestled in the WWF, WWE, or WW, WCW from 84 to 2000. So, I mean, that's a hell of a career. And was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame by Ric Flair. I am here to kick ass and chew bubblegum. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Mm -hmm. Roddy Piper in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Our next guest star is... Philip Morris, he is a movie, TV, and voice actor. Primarily, well, I'll tell you where I know him from. I know him as John Jones, Martian Manhunter in yeah. the series Smallville. Or he also plays Silas Stone in Doom Patrol. Oh, really? uh, that's a, yeah, that's a DC show. So I don't even know if it exists anymore. Um, it does not. They had talked to, I think they might have gotten a second season in before that I think they closed down the DC universe service. Yeah, and it's unfortunate because that was actually one of the better shows. But some of it um, went least, to HBO Max, like they, the they, Harley Quinn show and stuff. Yeah, they merged it all into the yeah, HBO yeah, so Max. It might be on that, yeah. It's there. Yeah. They just not make it anymore. Oh, new season. Two. Like how they, they canceled the Swamp thing. Well, yeah. they, that wasn't the HBO Max. Yeah, they thing, canceled you know. that like the first three episodes in. <laughs> <laughs> he's also a big time voice actor he's done a ton of voice acting what i like to do with every voice actor i like to find the scooby-doo movie that he was in <laughs> because there's always one every voice actor's been in the scooby-doo movie and he was in scooby-doo and of all scooby-doo movies he was in scooby-doo and the wwe curse of the speed demon <laughs> I need to like find out. That. <laughs> How many Scooby-Doo movies are there that they're scraping the bottom of the barrel with that plot? <laughs> Who's watching these? Who's watching I don't know, these but what are the mom. chances? Your mom what loves Scooby-Doo. She would totally watch that. <laughs> what are the chances that the Scooby-Doo movie he was a voice in featured WWE stars? Yeah, that... <laughs> it's kind of weird. All right, so... One of our other guest stars is Richard Norton. He plays Agent Norton because apparently it was <laughs> had a hard time remembering his fake name. They're like, listen, just call him by his name because he never knows his cue. He's always That's <laughs> what I love to think is that anyone who has the same name as they do in real life in their characters that they try to give him a different name and on like, set it. and it didn't work. Yeah, so just call him what he is. He's Norton. 
<laughs> Agent Norton. So he's an Australian martial artist, and actually in the Australian Martial Artist Hall of Fame, which I don't know if Sorry. that's like a big deal or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Him and a kangaroo. <laughs> I mean, that's like being the best at Taekwondo in Connecticut. Like, I don't really know if that's special. <laughs> Cue the first YouTube comment. It's going to be, well, actually, in Jake <laughs> Southerton placed silver in the Olympics in 1974. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, I say that jokingly because I don't want a bunch of Australians pissed off at me. But also because he's an action star, stuntman, fight coordinator, and trainer. And actually, he's had a pretty impressive career. He's worked as a bodyguard in the entertainment business. He was a bodyguard for Linda Ronstadt, David Bowie, Abba, John Belushi, bunch of stars. And then uh, he was able to break into acting. His first role was in the Chuck Norris film Octagon. Mm. And so and he has over 80 TV and movie credits, including some of our favorite movies, China O'Brien with Cynthia Rothrock, and probably a really bad movie with Don the Dragon Wilson. Is um, there a good one? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, Don, so, but don't act anymore. He, <laughs> but he's actually been heavily involved in cor fight coordination and stunt coordination in movies. He's done a bunch of that. So he's gone quite far. So he was Zamir in Jim Cotta, but he was also the fight coordinator for that movie. Listen, of all the movies that have fight coordination, that one was probably like that's that's the one you hang your hat on. Like, listen, this is a terrible, terrible movie. But yeah, I had to make so, a fight scene where there was a pommel horse and uneven bars in, in, in the scene. So yes. Yes. I, I created miracles. <laughs> so, guys, Richard Norton went from that to being Prime Imperator and fight coordinator and stunt coordinator for Mad Max Fury Road. Mm. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. I was okay. like, so, like there. quite a growth over the years as far as the stunt coordinating so yeah but yeah not as active um, but the stunt coordinating <laughs> <laughs> yes pretty much so and then our last guest star is lisa stall who plays maureen peak and uh she was in 12 episodes of baywatch night Oh. Uh, three episodes of Pacific, oh. which, is a, about, which is about bike cops with Mario Lopez. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. And she also got her break in a George Michael Careless Whisper video in 1984. <gasps> That's a good song. So, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I got two things I, in my takeaway from the guest stars. One is Mad Max Fury Road is the greatest action movie that has ever been made. It supplants both Die Hard and Predator. Uh, it's above both of them as being the single greatest action movie ever made. Two, good luck getting Careless Whisper out of your head for the next 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> See, and I thought I was going to have it bad with Australians, and then you make a comment like that. <laughs> Fight me. Fury Rose, the greatest action movie ever made. <laughs> I, I got no complaints out of me. <laughs> okay, so we talked about the guest stars. We Talked about why the bad cover made us choose this movie. <laughs> Essentially, we really, we really knew nothing about, for the record, we knew nothing about the movie except that they were, you know, that one was supposed to be CIA and one was an ex cop. So we were going with that. Mm -hmm. Melissa, Melissa, that's still all I know about the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, true, really. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I watched it and I, uh, just a couple hours ago, and that's still all I know about the movie. Yeah, it's really fresh in your mind. <laughs> yes. We really got two birds with one stone here because we were trying to fix out with Roddy Piper. We ended up with the Roddy Piper and Billy Blank, so it was a slam dunk. The reason why we sell for real, the reason why we settled on Tough and Deadly is because it was the only movie we could actually get our hands on. I ordered Tough and Deadly, the PAL version, which is the format that they use in Europe, on eBay. It took like seven weeks for it to get here. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> then he had to figure out how to get, convert it. <laughs> and, hey, English people, why are your DVDs so much cheaper than ours? <laughs> Seriously, I was able to get Galactica, the entire series, for like 20 bucks uh, or like, you know, 80 British money. <laughs> well, I mean, 
that might have been cheap because you might have been the only person that wanted it, but <laughs> <laughs> Oh come on. <laughs> They're like, oh my god, someone wants Galactica. Get it to him right now. <laughs> it's got Edward James Elmos. Oh, okay. Sorry, it does have dad in it, huh? Yeah. I forgot about it that. Does. I'm sorry, I take it back. It's got Edward James Elmos in it. <laughs> yeah, that's the best version. And I'll fight people on that. So let's dive into tough and deadly and finally give this movie a proper and probably the only historical oh, rundown. No one else is running this down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we open up. It took me a long time, probably three quarters of the way through the movie, to finally figure out that they were in fact in France. Yes, in the very that's beginning. What... Oh, and not oh. in Fresno. <laughs> okay. All right. I was thinking somewhere maybe Anaheim or L.A. <laughs> Seriously, it, it opens like an episode of like Dallas or something. The credits just are still running while he pulls up in this weird old car to the Okay, mansion. but you guys are like, you know, seriously, you are so unobservant. First of all, the license plates of the car are European. All the cars that are parked in the driveway, they're European. I didn't know what country they were, but they were definitely <laughs> European. Second of all, oh. when he knocks on the door, all the people that w work for them, except for one person, don't speak English. He's speaking German to his wife when she hands him the drink. It's clearly like it's supposed to be in the French I countryside. Still don't, I still it's like don't wine know. wine country in France. Then why was he speaking German? Because he was like, he had defected from Germany. My version and the version in my head, they're somewhere between Tulare and Fresno driving. That's, <laughs> yeah. For some reason, the CIA kills everyone in the house and kidnaps him. And I still can't figure out why. It was kind of confusing when you get later on and they take him and then they're in the okay. car and you're like, okay, but why are they? It's, okay. I get, but, I get why you guys so, are confused that it goes on. Yeah. Cause we leave that scene and then we either go 36 hours before or after that scene. I'm not sure which. <laughs> <laughs> I want to come back to this open because this is going to set the tone for the entire movie. He's in there talking to the German about something. He is really, <laughs> I'm, I'm just like skimming okay. over it. Go ahead. We're going to call him John because he's John through most of the movie yeah, and right. until the very end. John is very intrigued, but also dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the team, the CIA team that's coming in to get, or I guess it's the, the dirty CIA team, right? They're working for the dirty CIA guy. Mm -hmm. They come in to, to try and kidnap him. They're there to get Quicksilver. Quick comes up a lot in this movie. He puts mm. up a huge fight, and that lady takes a bullet straight to the head. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. He puts up a big fight, gets drugged, and gets taken. No introduction to who anyone is other mm -hmm. than he's Quicksilver and that he can fight. That's it. And you can keep his pants up around his nipples. I mean, and up there high. He's in France. I, I, I had no idea. So. <laughs> so what's going on in the with the German guy is that he the German, because I don't know that guy's name, so he's going to be referred to as the German man. He is saying, like, I have the information you want uh, that you're going to want about crooked people in the CIA that you work with. And he's like, and then, uh -oh. then, then, then that's when John's like, I'm listening. And that's all he says. Like, oh, really? Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. So, but we find out later in the movie that he's got amnesia. Right. Yes, because they drugged him with too much, so many drugs. Is that does he get amnesia from the scene? Does he have amnesia before? No, he no, 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 no. I, I thought he got am, I, I thought he got amnesia from the car that flips and practically kills no, everybody. He got am, <laughs> he got amnesia because they pumped him full of too many drugs. So they clearly let's get this straight. They clearly had to fly him or something from France to Los Angeles, drug, and then they're on their way to go meet up with whoever wants him. And then that's when all the stuff happens where he where he wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> when the guy's going to inject him again and he wakes up and hits him in the head and all that crash stuff. So he has amnesia because they've injected too many drugs into him. That's why. And then, the, yes. Sure. But he did not have amnesia while he was at the <laughs> Based on his acting, it seems like he had amnesia while he was in France. <laughs> No, he did not have amnesia there. So it is 36 hours later. Yes. So after he's been drugged, blown, mm -hmm. driven, 36 hours later, Elmo, 
yeah. is doing a bust on another bounty hunter slash PI private dick so who's also it, deep in drugs. Yeah, so he calls him a private dick, but this feels a lot more like a bounty hunter type deal where he's like collecting him for skipping parole or something yep. or for breaking yeah. parole. Like I, I, I get the feeling like they just mislabeled him because I think he's supposed to be a bounty hunter unless he's confused at what a private dick does. No, he <laughs> he says it when he talks to Mo. He pretends to be a private detective so that he can get close to people and then he but he's really a bounty hunter. He has a private detective oh. license, but he's really a bounty hunter because if he gotcha. went around telling everyone he was a bounty hunter, no one would talk to him. <laughs> so he pretends to be a cop. Like well, he's a retired cop, whatever. He used to be a cop. But he tends to be, he, he, if he says he's a private investigator, it sounds better than being a bounty hunter. You know, I trust you if you're a bounty hunter. You guys, ah. I think we should stop this because you guys didn't pay attention at all. <laughs> 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 this is really well, good to so see much. the next hour of me explaining to you what actually happened in the movie because neither one of you figured it out. <laughs> yes, but the reason why I didn't know what was happening is because I was distracted by Roddy Piper, Elmo, because he looks like if, Don Johnson and Walker, Texas Ranger had a child. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you insult Don Johnson with that nonsense? <laughs> Sorry, Don. It's all lies. Don't listen to him at all. You look nothing like that. <laughs> no, my favorite thing is with the scene unfolding. So first thing, I imagine Tiny would have been faster having snorted that much coke. Like I thought he would have ran. Man, can you believe that bald, skinny dude? I like, know. he gets his butt whooped, All comes back place. for seconds, and then comes back for thirds before finally getting thrown off the roof. Like, what the hell, man? That's a devoted friend. He wasn't yeah, even trying to arrest that guy. <laughs> the other major distraction, and this is the theme for the entire movie, is that their denim budget from oh Walmart God. was astronomical. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, everybody had to wear denim and it all had to be that stone wash you know that wash where no one ever really wanted it because it looked like it was in the walmart clearance and you were like no mom don't buy that walmart for me. Sold it. Walmart as long as you can that. keep your mom at a walmart you weren't gonna get it <laughs> <laughs> that in the v-neck t-shirt <laughs> budget was on fire there is so much denim in this movie that later Elmo's pretending to be a doctor, and he has on a denim button-up shirt with a tie. Uh-huh. <laughs> Was it a denim tie? <laughs> Did they make those? Did they make denim ties? <laughs> so also, at the end of the scene, after one guy gets kicked off the roof and they arrest Tiny, there's an attempt at funny, but I didn't write down what they said was funny because not only was it not funny, but it didn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it probably didn't make any sense because you weren't paying attention to the movie. <laughs> so like in the next scene, they don't explain or set anything up. It's just them in the car. And then the guy makes the comment about him. Oh, no, of course he's asleep. And then, of course, he's not asleep. And then the car flips like a billion times. That's it. We still don't know why they kidnapped him. Or where they are taking them, or who they are, or yeah. why any of this is happening. So all we know is that Roddy Piper thinks he's a criminal, and I wonder why. <laughs> Just by chance, they're taking Tiny to the hospital because he's done so much cocaine. Yeah, that they need to take him to the hospital. <laughs> Meanwhile, John Portland or Quicksilver is being ushered in. Jake, I'm pretty sure it's Jake now. <laughs> He, of course, is a bounty hunter, so he thinks he's handcuffed. This guy's got to be skipping bail. Or, yeah, he was, like, on the run or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he wants his secretary to look into it to see what's happening. He's only got money science in his eyes for whatever John Portland's up to. Because he's barely making it as a bounty hunter. She's like, I have all these bills to pay, and we don't have any money. He's like, I just got a bounty. Get the check from so-and-so, and then pay those people, and then pay yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about how the bus driver that finds Billy looks like Donald Trump? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly that. what I wrote down too. <laughs> Some guy looks like Donald Trump pulls up, <laughs> and it makes sense because Donald Trump Trump liked to take pictures in big trucks and buses. Like, how could you see him? <laughs> he did. He looked like a, a a younger, thinner version of Donald Trump. <laughs> Somewhere in 1995, Donald Trump's just driving around an empty bus. <laughs> now listen. This brief segue from the hospital to CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia, 
and the director of CIA stands up in front and says, you all know why you're here. And then no one says anything. They cut their papers <laughs> open and then they leave. That's no, that's not what <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Can we talk about how it was so super secret that the papers had a fresh seal? Yes. Okay. That was my favorite part because it's just like a strip of tape. So you can't keep telling me. You can't show up early to the meeting, lift the tape up, go, oh, shit. Someone's getting in trouble and then tape it back down and be like, they did not not talk about anything in the meeting, right? Don't they talk about stuff in the meeting? They basically just run down the... This guy was putting together a team, and now everyone in the team is being killed. Okay. Yeah. And that's then it. We, we, but and that's then we not jump. what they said. Yeah, it is. No, they talked about who they were. They weren't a team. He would, they, those people weren't a team together. He talks about that Quicksilver had a meeting with this guy who had some information. I don't remember any of that. That the German guy is like a terrorist, that they're trying to figure out what he was planning. So then Quicksilver went to meet with him because he said he had some inside information. Yeah, but... Before that, talk about this guy Reichman. Yeah, that's whatever. the German guy. Yeah, that he was putting he was putting together a team, and that the other person that was also a CIA asset was dead, and now Reichman is dead. They tried to capture Quicksilver, but he got away. All I know is it's very Jason Bourne. He so <laughs> he he loses his memory, and for some reason the CIA wants to kill him. I think because at the end of it, they're like he's either lost his memory. Or he, or or they're like, or he's turned, and and the commander guy's like, I don't think that's what happened. Basically, like I know him really well. I recruited him. He's my my. I trained him, so I don't think he did that. We have to get him off the streets to find out what's happened. Basically, Jake. No, I love Jake. He couldn't turn. <laughs> he must have. He must have amnesia because that happens all the time. <laughs> This isn't the first time it has happened with him, but okay. Back at the hospital, Elmo's going back. He's going to get Prince from John Doe, John Portland. Sweet talk slave past the front desk, dressed up like a doctor in a denim button-up and a tie. Yeah, what kind of doctor wears a denim button-up? <laughs> Ditches the doctor uniform as soon as he gets in the room, starts doing the fingerprints. Meanwhile, outside, someone is monitoring. Then another person comes in and tries to assassinate John, but Elmo throws him out the window. This plot seems so familiar based on like the high tech really feels like Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man <laughs> just with less believable characters. And then Roddy kind of looks at Billy and Billy goes, I don't remember anything. And Roddy's like, come with me. And he's like, no. And then the scene ends. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a pretty good rundown of it. Because would you, would you trust a man dressed in denim at your bedside when you woke up? He's like, hey, by well, the way, I'm the one that threw that guy out the window for you. He's like, cool. I don't know. They told me about it. That's the biggest question that I have. He snuck into the hospital. He's not a cop. Nope. He snuck into the hospital. Pretended to be a, a, a doctor. Took fingerprints. Threw a guy and killed him. He threw a guy out the window yeah. and killed him. Was allowed to stay overnight <laughs> in the room unsupervised with John Portland. Uh, no, he came back. Yes. It's supposed to mean like he comes back when he's awake. And they told him about it because John Portland's like, yeah, they told me about that this morning. He doesn't seem alarmed at all. They're like, he to yeah, they told me about it. No, I'm not really yes. worried about it because I don't know who I am anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> He agrees to go with the not cop bounty hunter now. He goes with him back to his place. And of course... First thing that pops into his mind is he's a white guy. He must be a serial killer. <laughs> he's clearly like hurt, right? He's really hurt. When he takes him out of there, he's like hunched over holding his stomach, which I don't know what's wrong with his stomach, but if they never talk about it or his side, but he takes him out of there like, whatever, let's go. Come on. And then two scenes later, he's got him on the beach and he's running him. <laughs> like what? <laughs> yeah. This great. This is a great section of the movie. Brings him back to his house. He is hurt. Bad. Yeah, he's Who knows bad. how he's able to get yeah. out of the hospital without someone stopping him? He's hurt really bad. And they get over to Elmo's place. Elmo throws a dart at the map. They pick his name to be John Portland because yep. he doesn't remember his name. They're like, well, we got nothing to do. What should we do? And Elmo goes, Yeah, you know, you're right. There's nothing to do. Come on. And they just start running. Forrest he, Gump style. Yeah, they just start running. He talks about how he's going to rehabilitate him. He's, I got to get you rehabilitated. Come on. And then he starts <laughs> making him run. He was like insane, and hunched over five minutes ago. How is running two miles and doing sit-ups help his abdomen that's clearly hurt? <laughs> and we clearly get an attempt at like a Rocky montage scene. Supposed to see them running and playing around 
and having fun. They're not running on the beach. They couldn't afford the beach, but they're running in like a playground, in DC. Yeah, <laughs> they're running on the playground, and they're then they're using the. My favorite part is when they're using the playground equipment to do pull up, and then um, Elmo has to drop out because he can't do as many as John Portland. And then at the end, they like hug each other and jump around. <laughs> yes. It was like scenes I've seen before of people playing games together and jumping around and hugging like they won the Super Bowl or something. But yeah, they're like, what okay. are they celebrating? That they that they can do pull-ups at the park? <laughs> oh, they had a great day and they had an ice cream and they made a friend. He's got nowhere else to go. He doesn't know who he is. So that's the only reason why you would choose to live with Elmo. You, didn't know, you had nowhere else to go and you didn't know anybody. And you have to live with what? Elmo and all the denim. <laughs> And you I have mean, to borrow with denim. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's a good thing he's not a serial killer because he really could have taken advantage of poor John. People are actively trying to kill him. Then he decides to take him after his montage, after their playground fun. They decide to go to the one place where he would stick out the most, like the most backwoods country bar. <laughs> Real fast, before that, we hear the story on why Elmo's not a cop anymore. Because the secretary is really into it. She's really into that story on why Elmo's not a cop anymore. But it's a stupid story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a really stupid one. <laughs> he wanted to carry his own gun when he uses it, which he's not supposed to. Yeah. His lieutenant loses it, and Elmo gives him 15 stitches. And that's what we're supposed to feel like, a connection with Elmo, yes. that he did the right thing. And her, at the end, being like, and tell him the best part. And the best part is that now that gun the type of gun that he wanted to use is now just standard issue so he was right but he has no job so (laughs) (laughs) seems to me like about being a cop a big part of being a cop is following the rules yeah (laughs) you know like following the laws and enforcing them and not assaulting your boss yeah because you're mad those are two big things (laughs) and all he said was that he got his boss said that you have to be you have to take a suspension for like two weeks so he could have went back to his job he had to take a two-week suspension but because his boss didn't back him up after he being, broke the rules, then he punched him or whatever. <laughs> being a bounty hunter is totally better anyway. He totally gets to make his own hours. Uh, gets to hang out with guys like Tiny. He meets strange guys at the hospital and takes them home with him. Names yeah. them. Changes their name but, for them and everything. <laughs> so now we're at this bar. John Portland's ineptitude, like social ineptitude, <laughs> gets him into a lot of trouble all over the place. Bumps into people, knocking drinks over, knocking drinks down other girls' shirts. Goes into the bathroom, talks to himself in the mirror. Quick, quick, <laughs> quick something, quick something. But that boyfriend, he goes all the way for that $10 shirt. A $10 shirt, man. <laughs> also, he uh-huh. poured drinks on her boobies, so maybe that's what it was. Maybe he was like, you poured, if you poured a drink on my women's boobs. <laughs> We all know why he was so upset about it. (laughs) Sorry, but it had nothing to do with the drink. (laughs) He has a fight. He's he's pushed into a corner. He tries to apologize. He said, hey, I'll go get my friend. I'll I'll get you the money. I'll pay for the shirt. I'm really sorry. He he is awkward. He does not want to talk to people, but he does try to apologize. And that guy's like, no, that's not going to work. So we're going to fight. So then it's like all of a sudden... His CIA training like snaps in place. And he's like, oh my God, I can like do these backboard kicks. <laughs> my favorite part of the scene is that Elmo is strategically placed behind a very short person so you can see his face. <laughs> it was like they filmed it one way, like, wait a minute, hold on. You and you change places. <laughs> <laughs> Front. Like, why did he have to be behind somebody? Why put that poor short guy there? He had to be really short. <laughs> well, first of all, how how dare he even think Roddy had enough cash to cover that shirt? $10. I mean. John remembers sorry. that he can fight and they need to go to this bar, this other bar. Oh, sorry. This is the bar where Trinidad is, right? The, no. Or they're going to go to another bar to go get him, right? Yeah. It's the next bar yeah, they're going to get. He's not there. Yeah, yeah. He's not there. Back at the office, but in between, they have that great scene in the in the office where Elmo's antagonizing John Portman to teach him how to fight like that, which yeah. he's clearly in over his head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's like poking at him. Tell me, teach me that Asian fighting crap, you know? <laughs> After they, like, battle and they knock all the crap over, Maureen comes in and act like a five-year-old or treat you like a five-year-old. Like, I'm not cleaning this shit up. Then they go to the other bar to get Trinidad, who just walks right into the bathroom 
And then during the fracas that breaks out in the pool room, doesn't use that as an opportunity to try and leave. Why does he, he just have... sits in the stall in the bathroom? Why does he have to time? leave? <laughs> I couldn't figure that out. I'm like, well, there must be a window in there. So I thought, I'm like, oh, he must be climbing out the window or something. Nope. He's just an idiot. He just thought if he sat in there long enough, they were taking, he was going to poop or something. We just, <laughs> needed, <laughs> we just needed two set pieces. Everything in this movie has to happen in pairs. Whatever Billy Blanks gets, Roddy Piper is going to get two. Yeah, so we course. have a bar scene in which John Portland fights and defeats a bunch of guys. So that means we immediately need to have another scene where Elmo fights an entire bar and wins. Barely, though. Mm -hmm. He was having some trouble with those guys. <laughs> then they go back to their regular office, and Mr. Milan's men have come down to bust in Elmo's teeth. Because at the bar, at the first bar... He captured Trinidad, and when he took Trinidad out, they said, Mr. Milan's not going to like this. He works for him, or I don't know, something like that. And he's like, yeah. tell him I took him out, with it, and I don't care, and I have a smile on my face when I did it. So, of course, and, and that, took, got back to, that got back to Mr. Milan already, and he sent his best guy there to finish the job, to to break his bones. And he actually like, sat on the phone. Like There's a part of the scene he's on the phone with the guy. And he's, Make sure you get his arms and his legs. And oh yeah, and his teeth. You know, <laughs> I could just see like a hitman writing it down. Arms, <laughs> legs, <laughs> teeth. Okay, teeth? Anything else, boss? <laughs> Which we still don't know what this criminal enterprise actually does. Whatever it is, it's very explosive because the whole <laughs> thing blows, blows up, up at the end, which is yes. where we're going to the next scene, which is the abandoned abandoned or unused army base that's yeah. now Mr. Milan's shipping center mm -hmm. with the CIA. <laughs> yeah. The dirty CIA officer comes in and tells Mr. Milano that Elmo is harboring John, and John is one that knows about their operation. He needs <laughs> Milan to take a step back. This is like the point in the movie where the henchmen start to get stronger. It's like all of a sudden now everybody knows karate. <laughs> I always wonder about these these parts in movies because it's like after a while of losing henchmen, don't you just start to look like maybe we should just leave it alone? Like we don't <laughs> maybe we should just walk away, guys. It's coming up. One of my favorite parts is at the uh, end scene at the warehouse when he turns and asks the guy, like, should we leave? <laughs> yeah, should we just go? <laughs> Fast scene on the street where John and Emma are talking, but it must have been like a setup for the catch this other third person that was spying on them. No matter what it is, Elmo sees them right away. They go and try and mu muscle him. Elmo thinks it's a Milan henchman, but the look and the behavior of him is clearly he's CIA because yes. he is willing to die. And he recognizes John Portland. Mm -hmm. So now they can't stay at the office or at Elmo's place. They need to go stay at so someone else's place. <laughs> so that means they need to go stay at one of Elmo's friends' house. Like far out of town, on the outskirts of town. Why do they always bring their friends into it? Why is this well, every movie that we ever watch? It's like this. Remember we watched that Charles Bronson one where he took her. He was like, "I'm gonna go to my. We're gonna go to my friend's cabin where mm -hmm. no one knows about it." And then they end up Everyone killing the knows friend. About it. It's like, God damn it, that poor old man was just retired, living his best life in that cabin. <laughs> you just got him murdered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this poor old guy has nothing to do with what's going on. He has no idea it's coming. But hey, you know, the CIA, they don't play. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, lets him in his house and he's like, oh, stupid Elmo. No, I'm not going to let you drive my fancy car. You don't like the food I have? Mm -hmm. Okay, fine, here. And then he's just in there getting murdered for Elmo. <laughs> Elmo was an ass to him. Yeah. And he gets him killed. And never any remorse about that. No one ever speaks about that again. <laughs> the CIA has to come in and confirm the kill. As they're coming in, Portland takes a little bit of drop, a couple drops of blood, puts it on his face, and just pretends to be dead. <laughs> and he's just walking around like... That's, that's all he's got to do to fake him out. Well, I mean, with his acting, none of us were sure he was alive through the rest of the movie. So <laughs> <laughs> that might have been his best acting of the whole movie was that pretending to be dead with his eyes open blinking. <laughs> <laughs> so then there's the battle with the CIA because Elmo has left. John Portland's there. He goes one by one and just trashes everyone that's there, including the guy that tries to make a deal, but then tries to back out of the deal at the very end. He tries to use it trick john but john is able to destroy all of them easily except for the poor friend poor friend is the one who, who, he pays the ultimate price except and that's where he learns that he actually is cia he's like i am cia he's like yeah you don't know <laughs> <laughs> 
The best part about again, this movie. It's exactly like that. It's it's <laughs> you're CIA. I'm CIA. Okay. And that's it. That's it. Next scene. Well, every scene that's the end of someone being thrown over a balcony. Yeah, do you know so, he's thrown, yes. thrown out of a second story window or balcony? Can we even end the scene? We don't even know. It just <laughs> keeps going on. <laughs> well, I, 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 so now they have to stay at most place. Way to bring the danger to her. But this, this is the best scene in the oh whole movie. Oh my God, yeah, it's bad. Now they're going to split up the duties of looking through all of the call records because Elmo was able to get his hands on those. They have a calling oh. montage of calling <laughs> every phone number on the list. <laughs> but it ends with they all realizing that there's this one phone number that is because it's Milan's phone records. Yes. It's one phone number he calls before he calls this other number. And John recognizes the phone number. He's like, wait, did you say five 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 zero 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 zero? I recognize that number. I don't know why, but I recognize five 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 zero 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 zero. My favorite part of the whole is just when they first get there and she opens the door and she's like, I'm really tired. One of you is going to have to watch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was funny, too. Also, it seems like this could have been a, like they could have figured out a more efficient way to do this. Possibly split up and go to another phone, maybe like another place well, where they had two phones, <laughs> not use one phone and then pass it around. Because what couldn't one person have just done this in the same amount of time it took all three of us? Why was them doing it that way more efficient to split it up? And they just had one phone. I, I think and what we're learning is that. Around. I think what we're learning is that none of them are actually detective quality. Apparently, secretary, a fired cop, and John Portland must have been not in the deducing part of the CIA. <laughs> Well, Elmo was supposed to be a narcotics detective, second grade. So that's like yeah, but he got fired. So <laughs> yeah, he's no. a bounty hunter. <laughs> he's yeah, a I mean, bounty hunter. I didn't say if he, he was, was better at it, he would still be a detective. <laughs> I didn't say he was a good detective. I just said he was a detective. <laughs> so now we're gonna get to the best character in this movie. It's not. In, it's not any of the main people. It's not the dirty CIA officer who's actually not the right one. It's actually another guy that's higher up they're than both. him. No, they uh -huh. they did work together. It's this tow truck driver. <laughs> <laughs> so they leave they leave Mo's house he can't figure out how they keep finding him they convince the tow truck driver to tow the car put them inside of it but then they think that the CIA will then think that they got away they switched cars so there's no use in tracking that car anymore they yell to the driver was the guy with the car was he with a black guy and the tow truck driver says he sure was was they bandits <laughs> He's wearing overalls in like a very old truck. Yeah. He's got like one strap on. I wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't wearing a shirt under the yeah, overalls. Yeah, he's like, why? Was they bandits? <laughs> Was they bandits? Where are they now? And he's like, oh, I don't know. They went on their way. <laughs> you know, and inside there, he's got his socks pulled up to his knees. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Apparently they found the tracker that was on the car. Now the CIA can't find him anymore. They yeah. stopped paying attention to the tracker. No, they anymore? took the tracker off. That's what it's supposed to say. Okay. Sure. John remembers the phone number is to a <laughs> CIA switchboard. Remember, five 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 zero 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 is the number to a CIA <laughs> switchboard. <laughs> switchboard. And his code name is Quicksilver. But why does he never mention that until then? <laughs> they have all that time where they're driving in the tow truck being pulled behind it. And then almost like, we got to figure out what this number is. It's like, I know what the number is. It's this. And I and it's from this and that. And my name's Quicksilver. Why five, five, you, five, zero, zero, why zero, zero. Not, but why did he wait till then to tell him? <laughs> why did he never mention it before? So now they sneak into Milan's crime headquarters to try and get more of his. Yes. Two addresses are going to try and go to Milan's crime headquarters and then this abandoned air base. Uh, uh, or, 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 or are we sure it's a crime? Headquarters. I don't actually know if any crime is happening here. It might just be a warehouse with people with guns. Like, but uh, John Portland starts destroying people in the most creative ways possible. He kicks a barrel into one guy. He does the standing split and then has his heel come down like a hammer on another guy. That, okay. Where he like props uh -huh. his leg up in that door. He props his like leg up and just waits. <laughs> I have to say, the, this movie had the most graphic sounding punches I have ever experienced. It sounded like every time they were they were punching someone, they were just murdering them. It's like this person's just dead. Their intestines are shredded because it was like it was like way too. Hard. Yeah, it did not sound like the kicks that they were doing. It would sound like you took a hammer and hit a watermelon or something. <laughs> Yeah, you like kick him in the chest, and it sounds like all oh, their ribs exactly. cracked. You know, it was like what? Oh my God, they're just murdering these people. They're destroying them. 
that's what I'm saying. Like, are we sure they're not committing the crimes? Because I think they're just bodyguards, and then he like breaks in and just starts murdering yeah, I mean, people. How do they know some of those guys were in the overalls? Like, what if they're just like janitors that work at that building? You don't even give them a chance to explain anything. <laughs> He just murdered them all. <laughs> See, and I feel that way later, too, with Ronnie, because he takes a guy out who's clearly just asking for a life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the best part is the end when they walk out of the warehouse. They each have to punch with one, there's one, two people left. Oh, yeah. So they each have to punch someone and they have to punch the equal color to them. They can't cross over. <laughs> yes. He has to punch a yes. black guy and he has to punch a white guy. You can't cross the. the do that you can't do that i'm sorry <laughs> you stick to your guy i'll stick to my guy <laughs> real fast there's sorry. a scene back at moe's which listen, is great too <laughs> listen it's not a 90s movie unless you have one of these scenes they're tired they're beat up their their minds are swimming in all these possible crimes could okay be one, of the, one of their minds is swimming. <laughs> yeah. one of their minds is swimming the other one is doesn't have much in there so i don't think it's swimming <laughs> john portland remembers his name is jake monk <laughs> I was going to say, John Portland remembers his name is John Portland. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because he gets credited as John Portland at the end of the movie, but his real name Jake. is Jake Monk. Which is a terrible name, by the way. <laughs> but the mandatory 90s scene is that the white guy comes in. He's like, oh, I'm so tired. He puts on some music to relax. He puts on country music. Mm -hmm. And John Portland gets up, or sorry, Jake Monk gets up and says, this isn't the good music. I must put on the whole time he got up. I'm like, please, God. Please let him change this to rap music. Please let him change this to rap music. He goes over, changes it to rap music. Right. And I had a standing ovation in the middle of the living room when we were watching the movie. <laughs> you did it. You son of a bitch, you did it. Yes. <laughs> and then they fight back and forth, and my favorite character, Mo, comes out, points a gun at him, and says, stop touching my music. <laughs> <laughs> so Mo and Elmo are going to go to dinner. You know, like you do when you're wanted for someone to murder you. You go get some <laughs> Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? Jake, unsupervised, besides I'm CIA, I'm just gonna go take care of this shit myself. Goes down to the army depot, immediately gets captured. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, kind of technically does get captured, but then uncaptured because they're stupid. At this point, like, just kill him already. He's caused all this problem. He's killed all these henchmen. Like, just kill him already. But instead, he lets him stay there, leaves him with one single guard. And then as he's gone, nobody responds to the sound of someone being murdered by a chair. <laughs> There's moments in this final scene where someone accidentally shoots their gun. It doesn't trigger anything to happen. Like, People are like, that's nope. a weird noise. Yeah. <laughs> huh. No, this yes. is one of those movies where we talk about it a lot, where action movies, where it suffers from, the storyline suffers from the villain or whoever has these stupid elaborate plans to kill these people in these crazy ways. You know, listen, if you just shot him in the head right now, this would be done. <laughs> Your place will yeah. have to go up in flames in like 10 minutes. But no, you have to exactly. be like, no, I got to do it in public where everyone can see it. I got to like make a thing out of them. I gotta build a rat a rat maze in my desk <laughs> yes yes <laughs> and have months of planning hall of mirrors just in case something bad happens yeah, exactly. <laughs> hear me out <laughs> <laughs> no we can't take them out now we got seven months before the mirrors will be in for the hall of mirrors <laughs> we've still got construction on the main hall <laughs> I haven't found some kind of Australian guy that, that has a bunch of muscles that can murder people. We gotta plan these things, guys. This is why we're never gonna be a major criminal enterprise. The other thing that action movies suffer from is that they try to make things more complicated than they need to be. Stupid, simple stories are the best. Just let it do fighting with a really ba basic story. Make it really clear to the viewer who the bad guy is. This guy good, this guy bad. Good versus bad. Okay, I got it make it really easy to follow that way it's, it's, it's just more fun that way yeah right this movie had been somewhat following that that choice up until this final scene and things get yes. really complicated because jake gets captured yeah then elmo shows up and tries to bust him out and they meet up and then they decide they're going to split up again and they're going to go and now milan jake, sorry elmo steals the money and puts it in that van and then milan leaves with it so now jake is with milan off site Somewhere yeah. else in LA. And the drugs are somewhere else. Yes. Like the drugs end up in somebody else's N van. No, or... the drugs are also in the van, I thought. Oh, are they all in that van together? Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. Roddy chokes out the dude and pulls him out of the car, which you're bad at your job. If you're a henchman and you get pulled out of the car by your neck. <laughs> like... <laughs> 
But that aside, he makes the comment that he's about him having 3,500 pounds of coke in the car. And he also has the money. And so my thought is, is why doesn't Roddy just go to Mexico? Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> that's where I would go. <laughs> Jake is running around blasting fools, kicking them, killing people in various ways. Really great sounding ways, too. <laughs> like Lots I said, crazy. watermelon's being squished. <laughs> it's like a Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> He's murdering everybody. There's no one who gets spared. Everyone gets murdered. That was the only confusing part. Is I couldn't figure out who were the CIA and who were the henchmen for the the like mafia i'm like okay which ones are which because these ones don't look like they're very specially trained so yeah there's this dirty cia officer that's not going to leave without his money meanwhile back in dc in langley the director of the cia gets wind of what's happening says charter me a flight i'm heading to la to personally handle this because his guy jake mm -hmm. is there he needs to get him yep. he, he personally chose him and trained him so then who jake loves that guy jake he's clearly <laughs> got amnesia <laughs> So then Jake gets captured, I kind of captured. Again, he's like surrounded. That's when the director of CIA comes. There's a shootout. The dirty CIA officer that you think is running the whole organization gets shot and killed. Uh, sorry, he has a big fight scene with yeah. Jake. Then after he's dealt with, then this other CIA officer comes up and says, well, it wasn't him. It was actually me that yeah. was, I was pulling all the strings on this deal. Another big fight scene with him. He gets shot from a <laughs> helicopter. By the helicopter with the director of the CIA in it. Which, kudos yes. to that guy, especially if the director was the one that pulled the trigger. Like no, he guy. told him. He said, shoot right now. Take <laughs> care of this. Stop this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> But from viewer point of view, it for a minute there, it just kind of looked like everybody was shooting everybody. And I, I couldn't know. tell if the guys in the copters were good guys or bad guys. Or All I know is I wanted the 3,500 pounds of coke and money, <laughs> and I'm going to be going to Mexico. Credit to the movie, this is a huge action scene because there's multiple factions all fighting each other. Shit is just exploding everywhere. You have no idea who's actually fighting who other than you know that whoever Jake is fighting is the bad guy. That's mm -hmm. that's guaranteed. That's the only thing that you know that's happening for sure. Everyone's getting murdered. Everyone's getting murdered in fun ways. Yeah, like how do you, at the end, he ends up being shot. Who shot him? <laughs> who shot Jake? Yeah, no. Oh, yeah, that's right. He is shot. Yeah. Who, who shot him? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> At the end, they're like, oh, you're you're hurt. Are you okay? He's like, yeah, it's okay. I'll yeah. be all right. And it's like, he shot that's... like in the side. It's like, who the hell shot him? <laughs> it, it, and it's a total sitcom Scooby-Doo ending where I am the head of the director of the CIA. And I take all charges against Jake and his buddy here. And we'll yeah. also give you money. And everyone can <laughs> copter pool to the hospital. Into my helicopter. <laughs> and they yeah. flew off happily ever after. Yep. That's exactly what he says. Because Roddy Piper, with the best acting of the whole movie, is like, oh my god, my buddy shot. <laughs> Why aren't you guys doing anything? Why are you? He's like, yeah, I found this guy. Oh my god, you're shot. John, you're shot. We need to get you to a hospital, right? Like, Don't we need to get him to a hospital? Yes, we do. And Let's then, take my helicopter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then John Jake is like, hey, this guy's my friend. You really helped me out. It'd be nice if you could give him some money because apparently that's all Elmo cares about. <laughs> He's like, we'll give him a sizable amount of money, enough that they won't worry about taxes, but it'll be sizable. Then Elmo's like, that's cool, but can we like take him to the hospital because he's still shot? So what? Well, what's great is that the director says, of course, we'll take him to the hospital right now. And Elmo's like, well, can I come with you? Yeah, he's like, can I bring him? <laughs> this movie ends in such a spectacular way, and you just... have no idea what the hell's going on. <laughs> no, no, and I just wish that there was a villain they could have unmasked. <laughs> We knew it was, it was you, old man Willie. He pulls <laughs> off the mask. Well, I mean, they really did have kind of a Scooby-Doo ending because all along you thought it was, I forgot the guy's name, Treakler or whatever. Treakler was the bad guy. But turns out it was the other CIA guy who's been talking to Treakler this whole entire time. And they've been like, <laughs> couldn't cahoots. And you're like, yeah, no duh. <laughs> <laughs> We and knew well, he was and evil. so it, it's a good thing that I just thought the CIA was the bad guy the whole time. So yeah, exactly. I was like, <laughs> All right. So before we get too far into final thoughts here, because I have a lot to discuss in the final thoughts of this movie. I already mentioned that I like it. Before we get to that, we got to talk about the music because these types of music segments are always great because it, every time there's like this music. <laughs> there well, other music than that, that rap song. Hopefully we got notes about that rap song. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's go do a brief rundown on the music in this movie. All right, John, most of this music sounds like it was sung by Roddy Piper. So <laughs> I'm not anticipating much. What music was there in Tough and Deadly? All right, guys. So sometimes difficult thing with music in movies such as Tough and Deadly is they don't have a lot of money for it. <laughs> so you don't always get the biggest names. And sometimes back in 1995, not everything was around. It's hard to kick up a little bit of info so our first song is one for the trouble by circle of power who was a rap group made up of wiz mun or money m-o-n-e i don't know if you're supposed to pronounce moan and l-m-n-o all capital but apparently he was only featured apparently it was only wiz and money who were circle of power they only released one lp in 1993 from rumble wreck but i was able to dig up a little info on L-M-N-O, who was born James Kelly, and he's a rapper from Long Beach, and uh, he actually released a couple things in the early 2000s as well. Hmm. But that's about as much as I could find for that song. So then we ended up, our next song is I've Had Enough by Bruin. So again, guys, not a lot of stuff about Blue Ruin online. I did find that James Adrian Cross posted on something saying that he was the drummer <laughs> and that that was the first band in 93 when he moved to L.A. James Adrian Cross was also in more recent bands of Modern Weapons and The Dark. And apparently the other members of the band was Paul on vocals, Mark on lead guitar, <laughs> Denny on rhythm guitar and Jonas on bass. I don't know their last names. Unfortunately, James Cross did not enlighten us with their last names. <laughs> so <laughs> that is Blue Ruin. Uh, they clearly don't exist anymore. Let's get to some people who do still exist. Too Much Too Soon by Butch Baker. And Butch Baker is either a country artist from the 80s and 90s, uh, or from the 80s, or he's a serial killer from Alaska named Robert Hanson. <laughs> so, my, my, my money is on country singer, but my heart says. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Hanson was known as Butcher Baker, and apparently he killed 17 women while hunting them with a knife through a, through the forest in Alaska. Pretty sick guy. So, I, at first, I didn't understand why someone would name their band after them, but it turns out Butch Baker is actually the guy's name. He's a country artist from Sweetwater, Tennessee. His last album was released in 1990. He led Nashville's Hori Pros Entertainment Group, their Nashville office. He was the senior VP of creative services, but it looks like he helped buy them out. Good for you, Butch Baker. Sounds like you're making some good moves. I would change that name because the first <laughs> thing when I Google Butch Baker came up was Robert Hansen, and that's some pretty grisly shit. <laughs> <laughs> that leads us to an American original by Jimmy Tittle. Jimmy Tittle is a country singer, bassist, and most importantly, the son-in-law of the great Johnny Cash. Jimmy Tittle actually toured with Merle Haggard's backup band, The Strangers. And then when he left the band, he started working as a session musician before hooking up with Johnny Cash. And he started touring with Cash, eventually marrying Johnny Cash's daughter, in 1982, he married Kathy Cash. And so, and then uh, he continued to tour with Johnny until 1989, in which he left to focus on his own solo career. So, he's actually had a pretty decent career. In fact, he still performs some of his original music, as well as performing some of Johnny's stuff, because uh, he was in the backup. He's probably the most famous person uh, in our music, but not the most important. Our next song is In This Land by Jimmy Glickenhaus. He's an American film producer an automotive entrepreneur. So his dad, James's dad, started Glickin House and Company, Auto Company. And they actually do make automobiles in some parts of Europe, as well as the fact that he has a massive race car Ferrari collection. James decided to use uh, some of his wealth to write, direct, and produce, as well as finance action movies in mm. the 80s and 90s. And you know what kind of action movies he decided to finance? These type of action movies. <laughs> Our hero. Mm. 
So I am sure that not only does he have a little bit of money behind this one, uh, he is also responsible for movies like Maniac Cop oh. and The Protector, which is The Protector's one of Jackie Chan's earliest movies uh, attempts at trying to break into U.S. audiences. He actually co-starred with Danny Aiello. Listen, I no, I love Jackie Chan, but Maniac Cop, Robert Zadar, mm -hmm. The Chin, My Hero. Bruce Campbell? Mm -hmm. That's a James Glickenhaus. And they actually, he left the business in 2012, saying it had become too hard to compete with major studios. He actually had a pretty good run, and I get it. You know, it's tough, because, like, there's a reason why we do these movies in, these, in our podcast is because they just don't make them anymore. But that brings us to our last song, AZ News Theme by Adam Zelkin. Adam Zelkin is an eight-time award-winning songwriter, composer, and producer. He has created cutting-edge music for over 1,197 TV episodes, Damn. movies, and advertisements. Damn. He actually does a bunch of ad stuff but he also like his big thing is like heart of dixie that show like he's released like three albums worth of music for them wow. so but he also does a bunch of reality show stuff like flavor of love and that type of stuff <laughs> And his daughter, Zoe, is a budding musician as well, and she is also showing up in some credits in music department stuff. She can also be found performing in the Santa Monica area, Zoe Zelkind. So if you live in that area, keep an eye out. Listen, it's, I'll be totally honest with you. It's more than I thought there was. I know. I didn't, I didn't think there would be anything, because I can't remember any of the music in the movie. <laughs> God bless all these people who make these kind of movies. You're doing God's work. <laughs> I know. Come on, James. Sell a couple Ferraris. Make us another one. <laughs> exactly. Listen, JCVD is about to do a comedy. People are down. <laughs> exactly. How dare you bring him into this conversation with this movie? <laughs> Let's go give our final thoughts on Tough and Deadly. Okay, I'm going to kick off this week when it comes to final thoughts, as I've been thinking a lot about this. And I already said I like this movie. I really do like this movie. <laughs> they got real deep on this one, huh? <laughs> this is the junkiest of junk food movies. And what I mean by that, and I mean it with nothing but love, but I'm going to put it in her perspective. All of us have things that we really, really love, but we don't openly talk about, right? This movie, Tough and Deadly, and movies like it are like the TV dinner Salisbury steak that you secretly love, but you don't tell anyone that you get it at the store. <laughs> right? You had to pick that one, huh? <laughs> you not love that it. Anyone, yeah, not that anyone on the podcast might seriously relate to that and only buy that one. <laughs> you love it. You know uh -huh. what temperature, how long to cook it to get that brownie just right. You know where the pockets of the gravy is the best. You know how salty that thing is going to be and have extra water with you when you're going to eat that meal. Yeah. But Even you though get it's it. probably like grade F beef. <laughs> but you get it every time you go to the store. Why? Because mm -hmm. it's good. It's okay to have some, those things every once in a while. You like to treat yourself. Tough and deadly. Treat yourself. <laughs> have fun. <laughs> Enjoy some junk food movies. It doesn't need to have a story. It doesn't need to have a plot. All it needs to have is awesome sounding big fight scenes. That's all that it needs to have. It fills a very, very specific niche, which nowadays is you can watch it while also looking at your phone. In the 80s, it was, I'm getting 74 movies at Blockbuster. Mm -hmm. Recognize these people on the cover, good enough. Yeah, exactly. Right, because mm -hmm. I'm. we're just gonna veg out this weekend. I'm just getting a bunch of movies. This is, I really wanna watch a TV movie that's on USA up all night or nowadays like charge TV or something, something like that. Like it is totally okay to enjoy these movies. This movie is mm -hmm. fun. It's silly, stupid. It's got bad lines. The wardrobe is hundred percent from Walmart, but you know what? Sometimes junk food is exactly what you need. John, what are your final thoughts? It is totally up our alley as far as the fun fight scenes and they are elaborate. Agent Norton did a pretty good job of putting things together. <laughs> so they were very fun with the fight scenes, but it's ultimately the movie is like 85 fight scenes and then a little bit of dialogue and plot mixed in, which is okay because I think it's better that way. I don't think, well, one, I don't think either of them have the acting chops for it to actually be deep. Um, <laughs> 
And two, I think the plot would have just gotten away. The most important thing is Rowdy Roddy Piper choking people and Billy Blanks being a badass and knocking people out and not talking. <laughs> <laughs> he is better in movies when he is not talking, when he is killing people with chairs. <laughs> no, it's a fun movie. It fits right in our standards. Music was a little light, but it was almost better for not ha for not having strong story or plot. I don't think it mattered that I couldn't follow the story as far as who was the actual criminal enterprise or what they were doing or why they were trying to kill a man that doesn't seem to care about them. But <laughs> or much of anything, for that matter. <laughs> what matters is that Billy Blanks looked like 30 times and kicked dudes in the face. That's what matters. <laughs> Melissa, what are your final thoughts? I, I mean, I echo all the things you guys have said, except I think the wardrobe was definitely from Montgomery Wards and not <laughs> from Walmart. <laughs> But other than Good, that, no. You have to pay for it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> put it on layaway. <laughs> they put that thing on layaway and waited to see if this movie made any money. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, I agree. It doesn't have to have a plot or acting or a any kind of anything apparently any good music or, <laughs> or anything so that you want to watch it. It has really good action, incredible action that you can't believe could be true. Like, even though you really don't know what the hell is going on because you're like, well, I don't really know what the plot of this thing is. But <laughs> sometimes... I mean, did, did anyone go to jail? No. But, I know. <laughs> but it keeps you intrigued because you think but somewhere along the line they might tell you something important in this movie. <laughs> So, I mean, as a kid, I love Roddy Piper. So, like, whatever. I'm I'm on board, even if he was the better actor in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and that hurts to say. <laughs> Billy Blanks is what he did. He does what he does. He kicks people's asses. He, he, he punches people. And I do love the little spin where then he kicks his leg behind him and kicks him in the head. That that That's quality. And for the record, I recently, over the weekend, watched by myself, with Dominic was out of town. I watched Roadhouse. That didn't have much of a plot either. So, <laughs> and that's considered a good action movie. <laughs> Tough and deadly, better than Roadhouse. You heard it here. I mean, if you want to put Patrick Swayze in it, you would have had a chance being. But, but like I said, I mean, it's, it's what we watch. It's what we like. I would watch it again if that says anything. Like. If we were going to be like, hey, let's watch something this weekend. I want to, for the record, I still want to find the other one that they're in together, and I want to watch that. Yeah. I want to watch all the Righty Piper, Billy Blank stuff. <laughs> and that's going to do it for us on Go With The Heat. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We would love to hear from you. Have you watched this movie? We want to hear from you. Has anyone else <laughs> ever actually watched this movie? <laughs> we would love to hear from you. Email us, goldtheheat at gmail.com. Go to that website, goldtheheat.com. You can find all the ways to contact us, all the ways to subscribe, including Spotify, YouTube, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. I don't know where the hell else you can get podcasts. They're literally freaking everywhere. You can get us on every single one of those platforms. The most important thing that you do, though, when you're done listening to this episode is to go leave us a review on your podcatcher platform of choice. But don't write a review. No one ever reads the reviews on podcasts. You just look at the star rating. So instead, we want you to write your story, your background story on where Mo comes from. How did Mo come to work for... Elmo at the private detective agency. If you can link it to the CIA, even better. Elaborate on that shit. <laughs> Support step number two. Send us money. I mean, just point, point blank. Like, we take your money. If you want to send us money, we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I promise, for every dollar that you send us, we will send John a nickel. He will get, <laughs> he will get a nickel of the, do of the dollar that you send. You can send it to us on PayPal. We have a Patreon. Square Cash, we talked about catalytic converters. Those are getting a little hard to sell at this point. So what we want you to do is start stealing copper. That's really valuable. <laughs> <laughs> send us the copper. Not the money. Send us the copper. Yeah. Mail it. the copper. <laughs> None of that shit is coated in PVC, though. It takes so much work to strip it down. That way we can go cash it in. That and the recyclers are totally onto it when you bring in just a whole roll of wire. It's got to be like scrap. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Solid bear preferred. We don't like the stranded stuff gets everywhere. <laughs> We're totally joking. Don't steal copper wire. No, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Support number three. Tell your friend. Tell your friend who gets the most offended. 
to listen to our <laughs> show. <laughs> Unless he's Australian. Don't, yeah, don't listen to us if you're Australian. <laughs> if he's Australian, he's probably busy practicing martial arts. So... <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get in that Hall of Fame. We would love to hear from you. Email us goldtheen at gmail.com. Get us on any of the social platforms. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, pals. Bye.